We've learned about diffusion, the movement of molecules to low concentration across a semi-permeable membrane. And water is the most common substance that passes through the membrane cells, so scientists have termed the diffusion of water as osmosis. Um, so we're going to learn a little bit more about osmosis. Osmosis is dependent on the concentration of other molecules that are dissolved in the water, and those are called solutes. Water is the solvent, and anything that's dissolved in the water, like sugar or salt, that's a solute. Um, so the more solutes there are, the less water, because solute molecules take up space just like water molecules do. So here, we have a picture, and the little green circles are supposed to represent solutes. So the, um, the right area has more solutes, and that's, therefore it, can, it holds less water. So we would say that the right part of the picture has less water, the left part of the picture without any solutes dissolved, it has more water. So water in this case would move from left to right because it wants to reach an equilibrium. It wants to reach a point where there's an equal amount of water in both areas. The osmotic concentration is the concentration of all the molecules dissolved in water. So it could be a combination not just of salt, but salt plus sugar plus other molecules, and all of those molecules would make up the osmotic concentration. Um, two solutions can have two different osmotic concentrations, as we just saw in that last picture. There was one area that had lots of solutes and the other one that had no solutes. So those would be two areas of different osmotic concentration. And there are some terms that we need to know. Hypertonic is the solution that has more solutes or less water. Hypertonic, more solutes and less water. The opposite is hypotonic. Hypotonic has more water and less solutes. So water goes from a hypotonic area with more water to a hypertonic area with less water. If there's an equal amount of water in two areas, we say that is isotonic. Two solutions have identical concentrations of solutes and identical concentrations of water. Okay, so like I said, water moves from hypotonic to hypertonic. So we're going to go through this um, little scenario with three different options. So we have a bag that's surrounded by a semi-permeable membrane. Um, inside the bag, there's 98% water and there's 2% sucrose, so it's a solution of sugar water. In the first um, experiment, we're going to put that bag of sugar water into a beaker that's 100% water. So there's more water in the beaker as compared to the bag. We're going to put the bag in and water is going to go from high concentration in the beaker to a low concentration in the bag and the bag is going to swell up. In this scenario, we would say that the beaker is hypotonic. There's more water in the beaker and we say the bag is hypertonic. 100% water is more than 98% water in the bag. So water is going to flow into the bag to try to create an equilibrium. Okay, so the second beaker is 90% water and 10% sucrose. When we put the same bag in, there's more water in the bag, which has 98% water. So water is going to move out of the bag into the beaker, and the bag is going to shrink. In this case, we'd say that the bag is hypotonic, having more water, and that the beaker is hypertonic, having less water. Water again moves from a high concentration in the bag to a lower concentration of water outside the bag. And the third example, this is equal concentration of water in the beaker as in the bag. So this would be our isotonic example. Water moves in an equal amount in and out of the bag simultaneously. So it's not that there's no water movement, it's just an equal amount in both directions. So again, this first one, the bag would be in a hypotonic environment. And the second one, the bag is in a hypertonic environment. And then the third one, the bag is in an isotonic environment. How does this affect our cells? Um, cell fluids like to be isotonic to the external environment. Um, if the environment outside the cell is hypertonic, 
the cell is going to shrink. All the water is going to leave the cell. The cell is going to shrink, and that's what's shown in this picture here. All of the organelles are jumbled together in the center of the cell. Um, if the cell is put in a hypotonic environment, all the water from outside is going to rush into the cell, and, and the cell is going to swell, and potentially it could burst. So it's really important that the cell maintains isotonic conditions. 